right, so this is going to be the last new material that we're introducing in this course outside of what you'll see in your classmates' projects. Um, so today we're going to be talking about primitive elements and justice in codes, so introducing one last type of code, um, and we're going to be uh, creating that code using something called primitive elements in finite fields. Um, so we've already seen one example or one type of primitive element, which is we call the primitive root in Z mod M. So we said that A in Z mod M is a primitive root uh, if every element of the multiplicative group is a power of A. So for example, if we're looking at Z mod 7 cross, so remember the multiplicative group, we're taking things that are relatively prime to 7. Um, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there um, for this one. And uh, then looking at powers of 3, we want to see if we're getting everything in the multiplicative group as a power of 3. So looking at this, we've got 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 squared is 2, 3 cubed is 6, 3 to the 4th is 4, 3 to the 5th is 5. So all this arithmetic is happening mod uh, 7, and 3 to the 6th is 1. So we see that we got everything um, in that multiplicative group as a power of 3, so that means that 3 is a primitive root uh, mod 7. Um, and then, so we're using this exact same idea, but now we're going to be extending this to any finite field FQ, not just looking at um, those special ones, Z mod M, where M is prime. Um, so the idea is basically the same, that we ha A in FQ is a primitive element if every non-zero element of FQ is a power of A. Um, so we're going to check this the same way, looking to see if everything, every non-zero element is showing up as a power of A. But we need to be careful here and make sure that our arithmetic is happening in um, the finite field that we're working in. So looking at uh, the multiplication table, we're going to figure out which elements of F8 are primitive. So starting with 2, 2 to the 1 is 2. Then looking at 2 squared, we can do 2 times 2. So in the table, uh, looking at 2 times uh, 2, we see we get 4 there. So 2 uh, squared is 4, 2 to the 3. So the easiest way to figure this out is going to be, because I already know that 2 squared is 4, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I can use that and then just multiply by another 2. So I can do 4 times 2 here, look at the table and see that that's 3, so I get 3 there, 2 to the 4. We'll take 2 to the third, which was 3, multiply by 2. Looking at the table, we see that 3 times 2 is 6. 2 to the fifth, we're going to do 6 times 2. Looking at the table, 6 times 2 is 7, and so on. We get 2 to the sixth equals 7 times 2, which is 5. And finally, 2 to the seventh is 5 times 2, uh, which is 1 in this. Um, so you can go through uh, and see that uh, for um, powers of 2, we get all non-zero elements of F F8, so this is a primitive root. So you can use um, the, or is a primitive element, um, so you can check the rest of the elements the same way, so make sure your powers and your multiplication are happening um, in F8, so you don't get tripped up and accidentally try to multiply normal integers. Um, so I'll leave the rest of these as an exercise, so you can do these for practice, or we'll most likely do these in group work. Um, so you can see which elements of F8 are primitive um, by looking at those powers. So we're going to use these primitive elements um, to uh, construct something called justice in codes. So justice in codes are constructed similarly to how we constructed concatenated codes last time, 
except that now the inner code is going to vary depending on the position of the symbol in a word of the outer code. So remember with concatenated codes, for example, we were looking at, we had a Reed Solomon code as our outer code, and then that produced a string of elements in F8, and then we had a way of encoding elements in F8 into binary. So the idea with justice in codes is depending on the position in the vector, uh, they might be encoded a little bit differently. So um, for justice in codes, our outer code is always going to be a Reed Solomon code, um, and it's always going to be over a finite field with two to the k elements. Um, so uh, for example, we can look at um, over F8, uh, this Reed Solomon code we've been working with a lot. Why did that happen? So this should be uh, one, 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 one across the top there. Um, so yeah, so we've got that read Solomon code um, and applying the outer code uh, 0, 0, 001 should be encoded as um, that uh, bottom row there says so 0145. Six, seven, two, three, um, and now for each entry of this, uh, we're encoding using a different inner code. So, like zero is going to be encoded using one inner code, one a different one, four a different one. Um, so each entry is encoded using a slightly different inner code. So the way this inner code works is that we take a primitive element in F two to the k. Um, so this primitive element G is fixed for this entire code, so we're using that same primitive element. And for each position I, um, our inner code encodes BI as BI um, is the first entry, and then G to the I times BI. Um, and remember, all of these operations are happening in F2 to the K. So probably referring to some sort of table to figure out what those are. So then when we look at the outer code word b0, b1, b2, up through bn minus 1, that's going to be encoded as, so for, for the first entry b0, that's encoded as b0 uh, g to the 0 times b0. g to the 0 is always going to be 1, but we won't fill that in for now. And then b1 and g to the 1 times b1 then b2 and g to the 2 times b2 and so on up to bn minus 1 and uh, g to the n minus 1 times bn minus 1. So this is going to be um, an element in uh, f2 to, to the k, and uh, let's say maybe our outer code uh, was encoding things using um, n-dimensional vectors, then this would be in uh, f to the k 2n. So really important to remember when you're figuring out these entries that these um, operations are happening in f2 to the k. Um, and so once we uh, take this whole code that we've constructed by variable concatenation, so having a different um, inner code for each entry, we call this a justice encode, where it's, so it's a read Solomon code followed by uh, encoding each entry bi as bi um, g to the i times bi uh, using g some fixed primitive element in f2 to the k. All right, so uh, let's look at um, our example again. So, so far we've got, using our outer code, we've encoded uh, 001 as 01456723 using our outer read Solomon code. And let's fix G to be 3. So this is a primitive element in F8, uh, which you could see if you uh, worked out uh, the details um, for which elements of F8 are primitive. And the powers of 3 are 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 to the 2 is 5, 3 to the 3 is 4, um, and so on. So you can use those powers um, to figure out uh, what's going on here. So for the inner codes, uh, we're looking entry by entry. And for our first entry, we're going to have 0 
and then uh, 3 to the 0 times 0. Then for our second entry, 1, that's going to be encoded as 1, 3 to the 1 times 1. For our next entry, 2, and then 2, or, and then 3 to the 2 times 2. Then 3, oops, those are not our entries, are they? Okay, so this is uh, 4, uh, 3, squared times 4, and then 5, 3 to the third times 5, 6, 3 to the fourth times 6, 7, 3 to the fifth times 7, uh, 2, 3 to the sixth times 2, and uh, 3, 3 to the seventh times 3. Uh, so uh, working out what these entries actually are, you can use those powers uh, listed up here, and then using the multiplication table for GF of um, uh, the field with eight elements um, to figure out what those actually are. So now the reason that we go through this more complicated construction is that it turns out that these justice encodes have some nice properties, um, which is that the rate is constant, um, the relative distance is constant, and the alphabet size is constant. So basically as these codes get large, they don't really get worse. Um, they sort of maintain um, the you know, properties, these properties that we want for them. Um, which isn't true for uh, like Reed Solomon codes, for example. So uh, this is why uh, doing this construction is beneficial um, and creates a code with some nice properties um, that are retained as it gets larger. All right, so that's it for this pre-lecture. So answer those questions. And that's the end of our new material for the semester.